Now, before we can track, we've got to make sure that the dish is really going to be secure in the ground, and here's how we do it. We dig a hole, if we're in firm soil, we dig a hole about a foot wide, maybe 18 inches wide, go down at least 8 to 10 inches below the frost line, fill it with some gravel, put the pipe in the hole, and then fill it all with concrete. Remember to weld the tab on the pipe so it can't turn in the concrete if it gets heavy wind on the, on the dish. Now, if you don't fill the entire hole with concrete, be sure and put some foundation coating or some tar on the pipe to protect it. And if you're going to use an eight-foot ground rod, you'll find it much easier to do or to put it in the system by putting it in the hole where the pipe is going. You'll have three feet less of pounding to do on the ground rod. Many of the new mounts provide you with a lug up at the place where the attaches to the pole so that you can actually run your ground wire right up to that point. If you're in soft soil, such as sand or whatever, make a hole at least 36 inches or wider, put it again, put some drainage, con drainage stone in the base of it, and then fill it with concrete. You'll need that weight on the dish to keep it from falling over in soft soil or sand. Now let's go to setting up elevation and declination. All right, for this part of the demonstration, we're going to show you how to set your elevation and declination. It's also referred to as zenith. Now, elevation is the part of the antenna that does the pivoting, not the front of the dish. The dish is not elevation. That's actually called the declination adjustment. This would be the front of the dish where the dish fits in here. This is not elevation. Don't take it from this flat surface. This is the part you'll take it from. And almost every dish I'm familiar with will have some way for you to get a measurement off of this part. This is the pivoting. You're pivoting for your, your axis is right here on the top and right here at the bottom. Now, this is your elevation tube you're going to um, adjust, and you find that adjustment simply by finding out what your latitude is. And your latitude can be found on Exxon road maps, or any road map for that matter. It's usually found in the left-hand and right-hand corner, not at the top of the map. Almost every top of the map is north, and that will be longitude. You want your left-hand and right-hand side of the east and the west on a map to get your latitude. Now, latitude is the part, the circles that go around the Earth, like the equator. All right, now, you're going to make this adjustment utilizing a protractor, which can be had at Sears and Roebuck or roofing supply houses or many hardware stores. And I'm going to show you a guide. It's an excellent guide to take your measurements from. It's from Gourmet Entertainment. As you can see, for 40 degrees, I will actually set my elevation to 40.71. Now, because this is not a tool, but an, it's a tool, not an instrument, I have found that if I'm going to go back and retract somebody, I can rarely make that uh, check my declination from the front of the dish. I almost always have to check it from the back side of the dish. And because this tool now is pointing to the ground, if I place it here pointing to the sky, I may very well have trouble with the measurement because it sometimes can be off one or two degrees, the difference between looking at it this way and looking at it this way. So what I do is because I've become accustomed to always having to have it point to the ground, I bring a flat piece of metal with me and I check it this way. And that's how I check for my elevation. And I set that by simply adjusting this threaded rod right here. I'll adjust it up and down to get my proper elevation of 40.71. Now, to get declination, and before I do that, let me just say this. This is an unusual tool in that it can be confusing. Here, it's looking at zero pointing to the ground, more or less. And if I turn it to the flat surface here, I've got 90 pointing to the ground. That can be very confusing when you're setting up a dish. Always remember to try to make the zero point to the ground or point to the sky, depending upon how you're placing this inclinometer in the position. Now. I've adjusted my elevation according to my area of the country by this threaded rod, or I may have a turnbuckle in some of the receivers in the marketplace. Now I have to adjust for declination or zenith. And here I'll put this on. Make sure you don't put it on any of the spot wells, because there's always spot wells or something going on back there. But put it there. And then I will adjust it in this particular case with the wine guard I adjusted here. Now, as this backup ring falls into the dish, that is means it's coming in closer. Now that would be good if, let's say, if I'm down in Miami or from someplace south, I want this less. As a matter of fact, when I'm at the equator, I would have zero declination. I would have no declination for, 
for the equator, and if I'm up in Alaska, I might have 9 or 10 degrees of declination. But my declination will be consistent throughout the country. If I'm at 40 degrees and I have 6, 5.5 degrees here in this part of the country, if, I have, if I'm at a latitude of 40 degrees on the west coast, I would still have the same 5.5 degrees. All right, so once I've adjusted my declination and the guide was in front, and you can roll the tape back to get to that point to look at it, that's all I have to do to make these two adjustments. Very simple. The only thing I want to remind you is remember to tighten your bolts up when you're done so that the thing isn't going to move after you're done. Thank you. We're now here in the front of the dish, and there's some critical adjustments which must be made. They are the focal distance. That's the distance from here to the edge of the uh, feed horn, and we'll show you that in a close-up, and also from the scale ring, the outer edge of the scale ring, to the outside edge of the dish. And we do that in three locations to be sure that this is truly in the center. Many button hook feeds today are no longer in the center because they've dropped over time. You also verify that your motor is in the right plane. Now, some feeds want you, you to have this on the north axis, and some feeds want the flange to be on the north axis or perpendicular to the north axis, which actually puts it in the same north axis, doesn't it? We're now here at the back of the dish, and we're almost all wired up. What we've done is we wired our L and B to our bullseye meter. Coming from the receiver, we actually have the receiver coming in to feeding the power, and we're going on to the satellite uh, L and B in the front of the dish. What we've done is we've made a jumper in the back of the dish to accommodate that for us. Um, that's one thing you'll need for tracking. The other thing you'll need for tracking is this meter, and you're only going to use it once right now. This is your protractor, and remember, protractors will either work off of 90 or work off of zero. This one happens to work off of both because you have the right angle here. But a lot of them you buy, you're only working off of 90. By that I mean when you put it on the back of the dish, you want to subtract your elevation from 90. In this case, we want to shoot for F3, which is about 16 degrees, so we're going to subtract 16 from 90, and that gives us 74. It would be easier for me, actually, to do it this way, and I just know i got to go to 16. The other thing I'll need is either a hand crank for the motor or something to move the dish. Moving the dish is pretty easy. Let's get down. We're going to track it, bring it down to our low satellite. Now, I could have used G3, uh, G1, but I'm into the trees quite a bit, so I'm just going to bring it to uh, uh, 16 degrees for F3. Into the trees means i got a lot of foliage in front of me, folks. <laughs> and this one, I'm going to have, this one's going to be... Uh, marginal on G1. Okay, now, what have I done? I've got a, a decent reading here, but I have no idea whether it's the best reading. Um, how would I know? I haven't even begun to track it, right? So what I do is, I turn, I could be on, you know, any satellite. I turn the dish until I get my hottest reading. And you got to turn it freely. But not, don't loosen these bolts in such a way that when you get done, uh, when you tighten them, you're going to change the, the uh, tracking. But uh, a lot of these outer pipes have a lot of play in them. So if you lose, you want to snug these bolts up enough so that they stay snug in this pipe so that when you, it doesn't, it doesn't flop over, in other words. So we're going to turn this to get our highest reading. <laughs> All right, now we have our highest reading. We're going to back it down because it pegged itself. Continue to turn it. Yes, continue to turn it, honestly. <coughs> See, this was actually an installation we're going back and readjusting, and the pipe is dinged. You really shouldn't have this problem. By that, the bolts are really snugged up so that they have left an indent in the pipe. You won't, uh, on initial installation, you won't have that. That's what we're, we're running into. We're running into the original dings. All right, there's my highest reading. Now what I do is that's a great reading, right? Oh, terrific. But is my dish track? Of course not. What I do now is I move the actuator slightly up. My needle went up and slightly down. Okay. All right, now what I do is that I'm at my highest level, which is about an eight. I'm going to pull the dish slightly into me. And now my reading fell off. I'm down to a four. So what I do is now, I want to readjust it with this. 
Now I, I'm, I've actually not, got, I've not gone beyond the four, actually. So by pulling the dish into me, I have lost signal. But does that mean that the four I had, the eight I had before was the highest? Maybe. To know that, I must go beyond the high point to come to a, to go beyond the high point to know where my high point truly is. Right now, I know by pulling the dish into me, my signal was dropped off. I'm going to go the opposite direction, back to the beginning, and then slightly, just a, a pencil line further, and retract, and my signal now has buried itself. It's gone up to a 10. So I'm going to re-bring it back to about an 8. So I did improve the signal level by going in that direction. So I'm going to continue to go in that direction until the signal starts to fall off. And when I move it, of course, I just because I moved it manually without doing the actuator, I actually lost my 10, and I'm now down to a 7. But by m moving the dish with the actuator controller, I pegged it again back to my 10. So I still want to keep on moving the dish in that direction. Bring it back to an 8, push it slightly, about a pencil point, and again, check with my azimuth, my uh, actuator. This end is called AA, azimuth actuator, azimuth actuator. I continue to do it until I lose signal. I'm back up to my, went to my 10, I went now back to an 8. I mean, I brought it back down to an 8. No, now I'm down. Um, I lost it. I'm down to a 4. So, I did want to, I moved it too far to the south. So now what I want to do is bring it slightly back to the east, although I mean the west, just about a pencil point, check it again, and now I have my 10 back. So that's my highest signal right there. I know it's my highest signal because I've gone all the way around to the south, so I've lost the signal, and I've gone around to the west, so, and I've lost the signal. So this is my best point. Now what I do is I snug up the bolts, just snug them. Don't tighten them down real tightly because you might have to make another adjustment. You, when you get up there, you'll see that in a minute. Also, when you run your cable, be sure to leave some extra, well, extra cable here where it's position tracking. Because watch, when we get up high, it's gonna, this is going to require more cable. This actually moves constantly. So you always want to make sure you leave enough slack in here so it has it will flex nicely. You don't want it to. Uh, be tight or stretched out. You want to make sure that all this cable will flex continually. Particularly because coax has a, center con a solid center conductor and solid wire by its nature is not designed to flex a lot. So you want to make sure you have a nice loop in here. Now I'm going to bring it to my further, my not my further satellite to the south, the satellite that is closest to true south. And we're at true south when this asthma tool, or actually this pipe here, and this backup ring are perpendicular. That would be considered south. Now, in our case, G2 is about a little bit beyond south for us. So now I can look at my meter. I'm a little bit beyond south. I see my meter. All right. I got, oh, I got, I'm buried. So I got to bring it down again because G2 is always hotter than F3. Uh, so F3 is always a cold satellite. A lot of times I track, I tweak on F4 because if I get about the same reading on F4 and S and F3, then I know um, that my dish is truly aligned. But anyway, we'll, for right now we'll do it this way. Now all I do to find out whether my next adjustment has to be made, I just lift up on the bottom of the dish. If my signal level goes up, I know I have to raise elevation. I go up like that. It went down my signal level. If my signal level goes up when I pull down on the dish, as it does in this case ever so slightly, then I know I have to bring my elevation down. And to do that, if you recall, you adjust elevation with these bolts. So I have to bring my dish down, therefore I have to loosen up this bolt here by about maybe a flat, flat and a half, and tighten this bolt. I'll do that until I get my highest reading. If I have to turn it more than a turn and a half, where I get more than a degree difference here, I would uh, have to retrack it in the bottom, but I know that I'm going to have to turn this about a quarter of a flat, or I mean a flat, flat and a half. So by a flat, I mean just one of these things. So I have to turn it just very marginally to get my highest reading. But if I did turn it like a whole thread or more, well, probably closer to two threads, two complete turns, I should say, then I would have to take the dish back down 
to my western satellite. And again, here in the northeast, it'll either be G1 or F1 or F3, and retract through the whole azimuth actuator gizmo again. Azimuth actuator on your low end, elevation on your top end, and that's all there is to tracking. Remember to